Good morning. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday. And you know what that means? It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, Platoon, I'm your host, Captain Cartoon, bringing you the best in 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s cartoons and animated. So, as always, Saturday Morning Serial is brought to you by RU Game, the best comic book, collectible, magic, toy, video game, and more store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And you can also find RU Game on Facebook. It's the word R, the letter U, game. And, putting this out there. Uh, we have Patreon is now up. Uh, we want to thank people who are already donating. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, it is www.patreon.com backslash group therapy TV. Every little bit helps. Um, we're trying to grow. We're trying to get better equipment, stuff like that. And working on other stuff to keep bringing you a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of stuff we're, we're working on. And... Hopefully, soon I can announce we have a sponsor. Uh, just finalizing things now. Uh, help us out a little bit. So, hope you guys had a great Halloween. I hope you enjoyed the special group. Uh, I want to say group therapy. Uh, the Saturday morning cereal Halloween special. Um, you know, I went to sit down. I started looking up cartoons. I'm like, man, somebody's over already aired. And I start picking through them, I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to do episodes based, you know, the Halloween episodes of TV shows, which we did. We did do uh, uh, Extreme Dinosaurs. But, man, I went through and found all a bunch of Halloween stuff because uh, we got to do that again next year. And um, so I know I'm going to run out of Halloween episodes relatively fast. But not as fast as I would because it's only once a year. So and by next year. I can rehash some stuff that I've aired relatively recently. So it gives me like 60 weeks before you, so you'll forget it so I can air it the next time. So, all right. That being said, we're going to bring you the all comic book episode. Every cartoon that I did that I were going to air today has had a comic book or it was a comic book before it became a cartoon. Uh, I know some of the stuff I'm going to air, Conan, Conan started out as a book, then became a comic book, then became a movie, then became a cartoon. Uh, Ultra Force was a comic book. Uh, Mask, you know, there was a comic book series. Uh, there was original DC run, and there was an IDW run. Uh, Robocop, same thing. Um, they did a adaptation of the original movie. And the other movies, uh, both from Marvel, uh, Dark Horse, and then Avatar, uh, all did RoboCop. So it is, it is a comic book. But they're all going to be comic book related. So that being said, I want to know what your favorite comic book is and what your favorite comic book cartoon. You know, I'm... I love the X-Men, so probably my X-Men and Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Two of my favorite uh, animated comic book related movie or comic book related series, not movies, but they were movies. Um, those are probably mine. Um, so I want to hear what yours are. So here you guys go. We're gonna start this off with the Archies. Pretty obvious, Archies. You know. So this is Archie's this is episode three, and this is Anchors Away and Jughead's Double. Enjoy. Archie's here. Betty's here. Veronica too. Reggie's here. Hey Jughead, where are you? We wanna dance and we wanna sing. Have some fun and we're adventuring. All our friends are here. We ain't the Archies without 
got the Jughead beat. Whoa, Archie's here. Betty's here. Veronica, too. Reggie's here. And here comes Jughead and Hot Dog, too. So everything's Archie. Come on, let's go with the Archie show. Why don't you join the gang and I as we visit the Bay City Naval Base? It's open house. Hey, Neatsville. <sighs> Look at this boat. That's not a boat, Jughead. It's a ship. While you boys look at the ships, Betty and I'll wander through that cute little store over there, full of sailors. That cute little store is called the Ship Service, girls. You sure know a lot of Navy talk, Reggie. It's called nautical talk, Betty. Gee, when I use nautical talk, I get my mouth washed out with soap. <laughs> Dig this boat. Hey, sailor, can we go aboard this butte? Sorry, mate. The ship is weighing anchor in ten minutes. Since when has the weight of an anchor been a military secret? I think Reggie will agree. He means the ship is leaving in ten minutes, Jug. Look, Jughead, you're like in a different world on a Navy base. The language spoken here has an entirely different meaning. All right, mate. Hurry! What was so different about that? Boy, what happened? We were just following orders. And it seems we didn't look where we were walking, girls. Excuse us while we find some place to dry our clothes. I don't stop that! You almost soaked up! I just live for the weekends and a chance to put on my Naval Reserve uniform. I do hope I'm in time to catch Commodore Short's ship for its shakedown crew. My glasses, where do they go? Everything is a blur without them. Why don't you look where you're going, you... I beg your pardon, Commodore. The incident was all my fault. Yes, sir. Fall like that is rough. I am sorry, sir. I, I seem to have lost my cap as well as my glasses. Oh, well, no time to worry about that now. Your ship must be ready to weigh anchor, sir. Sorry to hurry you along, Commodore, but we may be too late now. I wonder what the penalty is for impersonating an officer. <laughs> Boy, thank goodness we found these drying machines. I'm sure no one will mind if we just borrow these sailor suits until our clothes are dry. Hey, how do I look, fellas? Like a real gob, Jughead. Oh, yeah? Put him up. Put him up. Take it easy, Jug. That's Navy talk for sailor. Oh. Wait till Veronica feasts her eyes on Reggie, babies. Hold it, Reg. We can't go out with these suits on. Why not? Oh, dear. We've missed the ship. Thank goodness. Have no fear, Commodore. We'll take the hydrofoil out to the ship. There's a crew now. Come on back, Reg. We'll get into trouble. Forget it. Ahoy there, sailors. Now we're in for it. It's Mr. Weatherby in his Naval Reserve uniform. I can explain everything, sir. Now look alive, sailors. Pipe down. Man the helm of that hydrofoil. Huh? Knock it off, you guys. He doesn't recognize us without his glasses. Besides, I always wanted to get behind the wheel of one of those babies. The Commodore and I must get aboard his ship at once. What? Did you get a look at the Commodore? Hot dog! Now, where could Hot Dog have disappeared to? Veronica, look. That must be some important official of the Navy being taken out to his ship. Betty! You won't believe it! What, Veronica? The boys have enlisted! What? And Mr. Weatherby and Hot Dog are their commanding officers! <laughs> You're wrong! I do believe it! Arch! Jughead! Oh, brother. Well, what's the matter, Reg? Huh? Never mind. I know. What's going on? Uh, I think there's something you should know, sir. The Commodore is a dog. What? Your past has caught up with you, sir. The men are mutinying. But fear not, Commodore. I'll protect you with my life. <laughs> really, Commodore? <laughs> A simple handshake would have been sufficient. I demand you men return us to the base at once and suffer the consequences. Yeah, I'm suffering. I'm suffering already. Oh, boy, Reggie. And we thought you were an old salt. Now get a hold of yourself, Reggie. Here, let me take over. Uh, how do you stop this thing? Yeah, let me help, boy. Whoa! Whoa! 
I detect dissension. Mutineers have started calling each other names, sir. Whoa! Take cover, Commodore. Who is attacking? Oh, how dare you attack the Commodore, you pirate! Sorry, Veronica. If you thought Mr. Weatherby was tough as a principal, you should see him as a naval reserve officer. Landing barge off the bow. Huh? Oh! That was close. You can say that again. No! We're going right into the Missouri. We've traveled that far. That's the name of a battleship. Oh, yes, of course. I was just interjecting a touch of humor into a tense situation, Commodore. <laughs> it's time I go on the offensive and regain command of the ship. And without thought of gaining the Navy Medal of Honor, uh, should you desire to recommend me for such? <laughs> I wonder what he'll recommend us for when he gets his glasses back. All right, mutineers, surrender in the name of... <laughs> Quick, Chuck, throw her back! Aye, aye! Hang on, Arch, I think I got my sea legs now. Nice try, Rich. Hey, Jug, I got her headed back. Nice going, Arch. Archie, Reg, Jughead. Oh, Commodore, those names ring a bell. Yeah, a bell. <laughs> Hurry up, guys. We gotta get these clothes changed before Mr. Weatherby comes too. Boy, Reg, you sure got us into a mess. He's coming too. And I hereby accept this Medal of Honor for single-handedly capturing Redbeard and his cutthroat pirates. <laughs> Hot dog led us to where Mr. Weatherby lost his glasses. Quick, get them on! May I run for President of the United States? Well, the first thing I'll do is... Uh, Archie, Reggie, Jughead, Veronica, Betty, the first thing I'll do is run you all out of the country! Please, Mr. Weatherby, let me try to explain! I'll see you every day after school... Oh, Weatherby! Oh, come to our shore. That was an excellent exhibition of the maneuvers you put that hydrofoil through. I saw the entire demonstration from my ship. I'm going to recommend you be given an entire unit to train in the handling of hydrofoils. Thank you, Commodore. Thank you, sir. As I was saying, Archie, Reggie, and Jughead, I want to see you every day after school in my office and have you tell me how all of you learned about that ship. Say, being mistaken by Mr. Weatherby for that Commodore short is quite a compliment. He's quite a distinguished looking gent. <laughs> time for the Archie Dance of the Week. In just a few moments, the gang and I will show you another brand new groovy dance step that you can all watch and learn. So, don't go away. And now, a brand new dance to watch and learn. The Beanie. Well, put your right hand on your head And with your left hand hold your baby's left hand Now put your left hand on your head And with your right hand hold your baby's right hand And that's the beanie That's the beanie Do it! We've learned a new dance Let's dance it to a brand new song. Truck driver.
talked about it the night before She might have gone to New York City Skies are gray but the lights are pretty She might have gone to Hollywood I know she'd go there if she could Oh, truck driver Ooh, are you there, me, pal? Doggone it! I wanted to go water skiing, and Mom says I have to water the yard. Mmm! <laughs> you got it, hot dog! Ready! You know, Reggie has been teasing Jughead a lot lately just for laughs. But as the old saying goes, he who laughs last, laughs best. Hey, skin and bones. Huh? Oh, hiya, Reg. <laughs> Sorry about that, handsome, but you shouldn't stand so close to mud puddles. Boy, some of that could have splashed off you onto me. Gee, I'm sorry, Reg. I'll, I'll watch it next time. Boy, if I wasn't afraid of poisoning myself, I'd sure take a hook out of... Come on, hot dog. Hold the door, Reg. <laughs> sure. Oh, sorry, chum. Uh, sure, Reg. Accidents will happen. It wouldn't have if you hadn't been standing there. Watch that in the future, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. That does it. Poison or not? <laughs> Hot dog! <laughs> Greetings, group. Hi, Hi Reggie. Reggie. Pull up a chair and rest your bones, pal. Hi, don't mind if I do. Hiya, gang. <laughs> Sorry, Jug. This seat is taken. My mistake, Reg. <laughs> well, I'll see you all later. I gotta go get a bandage. I think I bit my tongue. Aren't you being a bit unkind to Jughead lately, Reggie? Come on, Reg. Just because Jug is easy going, there's no reason you have to pick on him. Me? Pick on Juggy? They haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be more careful. I seem to be goofing up a lot lately. Hey, handsome. Huh? Well, I'll be. You look like an intelligent type of guy. Say, you're handsome yourself. The name is John L. Sullivan Jackson, junior state karate champ. My bus is laying over for a while. Can you tell me where I can pick up a malt and burger? Uh, down at Pop's Chocolate Shop, John. Thanks, pal. You can call me Jughead. It's a nickname. Well, wonders never cease. It's mine, too. Say, Jug, could I see the karate chop again? Sure, Jug. <laughs> see you around, good looking. So long, handsome. Kids and their newfangled dancers. <laughs> Groovy man, groovy. Sorry, Pooch. I didn't see you. Pooch? Hiya, gang. Hiya, Jughead. Welcome back. Ah. Gee, how do you know my name? 
Yeah, well, a lucky guess, I guess. Jum jiddy did jum jum cha jiddy jum dum cha. Now, Reggie, remember, be nice to Jughead. Sure, sure. Mind if I cut in, Jum? Chomp! Why, of course not, Jug. Be my guest. Thanks, Dad. Chee 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 choo choo. Why, Jughead, you're really some dancer. You know it, baby. You know it, baby. Hey, Popper, uh, give me a cup of water, huh? I'm a little thirsty. Sure, Reggie. Wow! Go, Jug, go! More careful not to dance in water, Juggy. <laughs> Since I'm a guest in town, I'm going to pretend that didn't happen. Hey, everybody here seems to know my name. How's about telling me yours? Huh? Why, that last bowl must have jarred Juggy's memory. Why, well, I'm Archie, Jug, and it's Veronica, Betty, and Reggie, as always. Oh, brother, the old sympathy bit. I'll take care of that. Ah, uh, my shoe is untied. Why don't you take hot dog and run home and rest, Jug? Hot dogs? Blah! I'll have another burger and wait for the bus. He doesn't remember me. I'm a mental orphan. On <laughs> second thought, how about another dance? Last one to the jukebox is a new... Hey, what's going on around here? <laughs> How careless of me. I must have accidentally tied jug shoes instead of mine. <laughs> Is that so? You know, I think you did that on purpose. You don't say. Oh, let me straighten your cap. <laughs> Sorry, Juggy. Forget it, Grease Top. Grease Top. Oh, oh. Jughead has really lost his head. Here, let me straighten out your belt. Jughead! Well, I'll be doggone. Hey, I'm, I'm dizzy. That, that wasn't fair. <laughs> Quick, give me my belt. Sure, cream puff. Cream puff? My arms, I can't move my arms. Get me out. All you have to do is slide your hands out, Claude. Here, I'll grease you up a bit. That's whipped cream. You don't say. Hmm. So it is. The only thing to do is take the belt off again. Whoops. Yeah. Allow me. Leave me alone. You're inhuman. Thank you. <laughs> this is too good to be true. No comment. <laughs> a little too snug, chump. <laughs> Have it your way. Get me down from here. My pleasure, Prince Uncharming. <laughs> to my ears, pal. I give up, Jughead. I'll never pick on you again as long as I live. Goodness me. Where did Jughead get all that strength? He's like two different people. I don't believe it. He is two different people. Oh, no. Double trouble. Help. Let me out of here. I don't see it. I don't see it. Two Jugheads? You know the old saying. Two jug heads are better than one. And twice as beautiful. Everything's Archie. Archie's here. Betty's here. Veronica, too. Reggie's here. Hey, Jughead, where are you? Adventuring, all our friends are here, but it ain't complete. We 
Turn after these messages. They're doing push-ups in Peoria. They're jogging in L.A. They're exercising everything in lots of crazy ways. What take it from the chopper? Hey, the chopper, yeah, that's me. <laughs> if you want to have great choppers, exercise your teeth. Those choppers really chew, chew, chew. Exercise those choppers on some good hard food. Your molars grind. Your canines tear. Incisors bite right through. So exercise those choppers on some good hard food. Pumpernickel. Carrot sticks. Crunchy fruits and nuts. Things you really have to chew will make your choppers tough. So take it from the chop, cause choppers know it's true. Exercise is great, but exercise your choppers too. Hey, chopper, how about running a few laps with us? Hey, later, man. I'm eating a celery stick. This is hard exercise. The galaxy explodes. The Rebels return. You can relive it all with Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. Rebel attack squad ahead. New Imperial shuttle. You have to put it together. Batteries not included. Action figures each sold separately. After him. Excellent, Lord Vader. Death Star signaling. Ring up. Prepare to land. Landing you down. Ramp engaged. This battle station better be ready or... <laughs> yes, my Emperor. New Imperial shuttle. Action figures sold separately. From Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. Hey, here you go. Uh, somebody at one time thought it'd be a great idea because Richard Pryor needs a kid's show. Uh, but that was a great Saturday, man, back in the day. Muppet Babies, Get Along Gang, Saturday Super K, Dungeons and Dragons, Pole Position, and Pryor's Place. Huh, crazy. Um, so I hope you guys are still liking the Archies. Um, this is it's a fun show. I mean, I... I think I barely watched the Archies when it when it was in syndication. Um, a lot of these, because because I was a Josie and the Pussycats, so I watched the Josie and the Pussycats because it was a spinoff. What I thought was a spinoff of Scooby Doo. It wasn't until later when I when I started realizing that one, those were around a lot longer than Scooby Doo. But uh, that being said, here you guys go is Josie and the Pussycats. For those of you who've asked. I know a lot of you guys want to see Josie and the Pussycat, so here you go. And this is Josie and the Pussycats, episode 8. And this is Never Mind a Mastermind. Enjoy. Wow, this is great. Playing a gig in Holland. Groovy. And so romantic, Alan. We better move it. We're supposed to meet the others at the shopping plaza. Hold it, Melody. Why are you wearing those crazy things? The noise is giving me a headache. It's the thing to do. All the Hollanders wear them. Blockhead. Those are wooden blocks, not wooden shoes. Get rid of them. Okay, I'll trade them in at the shoe store. Trade them in? This I gotta see. Hi, I want to trade in these for a pair of purple wooden shoes. Trade blocks of wood for purple wooden shoes? That's the code name. Here you are. You must be the contact. No, silly. I'm a pussycat. <laughs> Very clever. But remember, turn the tulip. Oh, sure. You must use tulips instead of shoelaces. Hmm. She's either the cleverest or the dumbest spy in the business.
What do you know? She did trade in those blocks of wood for a pair of shoes. Hey, guys, hop in. As soon as I hop into my new shoes, well, speed it up, will you? Oh, I know. I forgot to turn the tulip. Hey, what's that? How clever. <laughs> a picture and a stereo in my shoe. Stereo, my eye. That's a secret spy type recorder. Well, let's hear what it says. Turn it on. Good afternoon, Agent 008. This is your secret assignment. The picture you are looking at is a picture of an international villain known as the Mastermind because he is a master of disguise. He is faceless. Hey, he doesn't have a face. Precisely. The Mastermind intends to steal an amazing anti-gravity device from the geophysical lab tonight. You must stop the Mastermind from getting the device at all cost. Gee, what'll we do? Let's go to the police. No one, not even the police, must know of this mission. And if you fail to carry out this mission, it will mean... This tape will self-destruct in one second. Boy, <laughs> these Dutch sure wear funny shoes. <laughs> what does he mean by... Simple, chicken little brother. <laughs> oh, sorry I asked. Well, gang, like it or not, We've got to match our minds with the mastermind's mind. Well, gang, I think we have a plan to save the anti-gravity device and stop the mastermind. We? Yes, you too. Now hit the lights. Good. Now watch the screen closely. This is the geophysical lab. Josie on the left, myself and Alexander will slip past the guards. Disguised as scientists. Oh, no, we won't. Why not? Josie can wear that old woman disguise. It'll be a big improvement. OK, do it her way, Alan. I figured that. Much better. Now, there's a security guard to get past. So that's where Alexander, Valerie, and Melody come in. Disguised as telephone repairmen. <laughs> and repair girls. After we get in, we're on our own. Any suggestions? Hey, I got a plan, too. Let's take this mission to the police. Don't you remember what the voice said? Yeah, we go to the police and... Oh, you would have to remind me. Anyway, how are we going to get the device out of the lab undetected? I have an idea, and it'll be easy as pie. Great. Now, let's get going before Mastermind beats us to it. A report from our Amsterdam agent, Mastermind. It's the old purple shoe contact trick. So, these are the counter spies sent to foil Mastermind, eh? However, Mastermind's electronic brain shall find a foolproof plan to deal with these meddlers. Ah! Little do they know, but the Mastermind will soon join their little group. <laughs> Here, I'll take these. Shall I wrap them? No, uh, I'll wear them. Wear them? I am Professor Alexander Graham Cracker. And these are my assistants, Madame Curious and Dr. Honey Pie. My middle name is Sugar. Our um, <coughs> fellow scientists are expecting us. First, I must check with security. Hope the gang fixed his phone. Okay, Alexander, plug in the telephone cable. Is this the right socket, Valerie? No, that was the wrong socket. What a silly time for a barbecue. Any more assistance for my assistant, and we're in trouble. Well, anyway, the phone's fixed just in time. There she goes. It's the guard. I know his ring anywhere. Hello, security. No, this is Melody. <laughs> I want security. She doesn't work here. May I help you? Do you know Alexander Cracker? Of course. And I know his brother, Animal Cracker, too. Well, what about Madame Curious? What about her? Is it all right to let them pass? Sure. I've been expecting them. I knew help was hard to get, but she is ridiculous. All right, Professor, your party has been cleared. I could have
could have told you that. So far, so good. Ah, you must be Professor Schmelt. We've been expecting you. I am? Uh, you have? You'd better pretend you're Professor Schmelt, or he'll think something's fishy. Come, all the world's great scientists are waiting for a demonstration of your secret new machine. Now what'll we do? Simple, Josiekins. We'll fake it. And that's just what we'll have to do. Come on. Hello, scientists. I would like to introduce Professor Schmelt. Thank you, fellow scientists. My scientific demonstration will demonstrate the cracker extrapolator Q34 what you may call it. Please uh, state what it does. Oh, everything from making pizzas to purifying the air. Would you explain, please? Uh, yes, well. Following the Josephian theory that snasophrenism is equal but opposite to counterpetal force, this naturally disintensifies and extrapolates, thus resulting in a 100% blendotopia. Uh, a demonstration. Naturally. Um, what do we do? Purify the air. Uh, of course. If my assistants will assist, so please. Yes, Professor. I'll do the assisting, Granny. This high voltage should put a stop to the meddling. I think that's enough soap, Professor. Whoever heard of purifying the air with soap? I did, Buster. Just watch what happens when I plug in this whirligig washing machine contraption. <laughs> oh, no. This is going to be some demonstration. Ew! Help! It may not clean the air, but it'll clean everything else. Sebastian, turn it off! No, dum-dum, that's the wrong way! I think that little demonstration will soon be over. Well, there goes our demonstration. Look out! It's gonna fly apart! Here it comes back! Duck! Never have I seen such a demonstration! It's preposterous! Gee, I wonder how our guys are doing. By the way, this mission sounds, I'm afraid to ask. Come on, let's head for the commissary. It's time for Operation Pie. Oh, there it goes! Quick, follow that crazy contraption. <laughs> Alexandra, are you all right? Oh, I will be. After a few minutes in your arms. Alan, over here. I found the anti-gravity device. Wow. Oh, I think I'm going to faint. Catch me, Alan. <laughs> nice going, Josie. I get all the lumps, and Josie gets Alan. Now that we have this thing, let's get out of here before we run into the mastermind. Right, and that means we go to the cafeteria for step two of our plan. schedule. Here, Sebastian, go hide the device in one of the pies. I'll take care of the chef. Alan, the master of disguise, now becomes, voila, the new master chef. Oh, Alan, you're wonderful. I said, who ordered those pies? I, the new head chef, ordered these pies. But uh, there are too many pies. I agree. I will get rid of some. Okay, Sebastian, which pie did you put the device in? Well? Oh, you fur-brained feline. You'd better find out. I think we'd better all look for it. Not in here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. Anyone having any luck? Meaning of this? Honest, sir, it was an accident. 
Please accept my apologies. You can take back your apologies and your pie. Oh, so sorry. Huh? The two-faced chef? Smile when you say that, partner. I have more pies than you have faces. Deep silly way to find them anti-gravity gimmick. Take zap, and zap, and zap, and zap, and zap. Oh, I keep up. And not a pie too soon. Here's one pie left. And it's got the anti-gravity device in it. I'll take that. So, imposters. Uh-oh, the game's over. Split up. They can't catch us all. Dig out. I'm digging, I'm digging. At least it's not Mastermind after us. Whee! Head for the truck, Alexander. You don't have to tell me. Now they shall learn why I am called Mastermind. Who taught you to drive? Don't complain. We're safe. Not for long. Hi, gang. Alan. Sure. Don't you recognize me? Anytime, anywhere, Alan, dear. Great. Now hang on tight. Hey, where are they going? I don't know, but let's follow them. It's funny, it's almost as if they were trying to ditch us. Now that we're together, Alan, why don't we go to some romantic, out-of-the-way place? Do you have the device? Yes, dear. Then that's exactly what I had in mind. Yikes! It's him! Disguising yourself as my Alan was a sneaky trick, Mastermind. You mean a clever trick. And thank you for the anti-gravity device. You're welcome. I think. <laughs> what are you gonna do with us? I'll be glad to tell you. As the windmill blades turn, the gear you sit on will mesh with another large gear. <laughs> yeah, and mesh us to mush. Is that anything like oatmeal? <laughs> it's the van. I wonder if they're in that old mill. I'll bet this is the Mastermind's hideout. Come on, we gotta get in there. And unseen. This is our way in. Hang on. Going up. Top floor. Everybody off. Here's the window. There they are. And they're tied to those gears. We'll never get down in time to shut off the windmill. Maybe we can, but Sebastian can. Get going, cat. <laughs> Sebastian, I don't want to get my body wrinkled. No, Sebastian, no! Yeah. He'll never stop those gears in time. And there's only one other way. Sebastian, turn the anti-gravity device on the kids.
complete. But what about the two creeps in the back? This is where they're getting off. End of the line. Holland Police. <laughs> And now you can bring all the action of Batman home with the Batmobile, action figures, and more. Each item sold separately from Sharon Toy. Here are real big rig racers. Here are Tonka's big rig clutch poppers. To put you into the action, the racing action. You can rev them up. that button. That's big rig racing. That's turbo sound. There are three big rig clutch poppers, each sold separately. New from Tonka. You know, I hope you bear with me. The Captain uh, Bad Sinuses. Um, check your local weather. Um, it goes from being warm to cool, warm to cool, warm to cool. Uh, that does not work with the captain's uh, sinuses because uh, they suck. So, hope you guys like Josie and the Pussycat still. Uh, hope you're still having fun with it. Um, I'm a sucker for Josie and the Pussycats. Um, you know, like I said, very Scooby Doo esque. I even like the spin off, and they were in Scooby Doo. Always fun. So, we're going to keep it Archie. And we're going to go to Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. Um, sucker for Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, too, man. Uh, I love Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Uh, T Tina uh, was a big fan of the uh, Melissa Joan Hart stuff. Um, I watched it, but I was never home when it was on. But I watched it when I could. I mean, she loved it. So we're bringing you Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. And this is Generation Flap and School Days. Enjoy. Decorations? For what? 
for my surprise birthday party for Archie tonight. Remember, Aunt Zelda? You said it would be okay. Huh. Oh, dear. She's right, sister. I forgot to tell you. Well, this is a fine spot you've put me in. You know we're having our magic seminar tonight. All the leading witches and warlocks will be here, including Miss Della, the head witch. Sabrina, you'll just have to cancel your party. But, but, but Hilda, that wouldn't be fair. And besides, Andy, it's too late. The kids are already on their way. Well, all right. But they'll have to use the back door and stay in the back of the house. Oh, and take down these decorations at once. You forgot. Huh. Oh, look at the time. I've got to work fast. There, that should do it, huh, Salem? Now let's see what the adults are doing. Shh. And now, fellow witches and warlocks, you are about to witness the most earth-shaking feat of ledger de, ledger de, ledger de. The word is ledger domain. Oh yes. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Della. I guarantee that anyone performing this trick will bring down the house. Ho oh, hum. Abracadabra. She wasn't kidding. The house is coming down. Abra, Abra! Wow, some trick, huh, Salem? If we're quite through with childish nonsense, we can get down to more serious matters. I am about to perform a feat of magic never before witnessed by witch or mortal. I must insist on absolute silence. If you don't open up, I'll knock it down. <laughs> Ooh, who's making all that racket? Come on, let's get started. Start. Yeah, right. Now, now, Miss Della, it's just some of Sabrina's friends. Look at all those groovy witch outfits. Sabrina didn't say anything about. Oh, hi, kids. Our party's around the back. Come on with me. Ooh. Everything's all right now. Very well. I'll overlook it this time. Quiet, everyone, and concentrate. Spirits of magic, hear this plea. I call upon you to speak to me. Oh! Sugar. Oh, honey, honey. Sure thing, Sabrina. Hey, who wants some? Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, to resume. Magic spinner. Oh! Oh, poor Moose. <laughs> Shame on you, hot dog in Salem. Now you behave. Gee, I better find the broom and clean this up. Oh, good. Here's what I could use. Cool it, kid. Huh? Who said that? I guess it must have been the wind. Wow. Sure is breezy tonight. <laughs> Ever since I met you, I couldn't want you better. Say, Sabrina, what did you tell Archie to get him here for a surprise party? I asked him if I could borrow his canoe. His canoe? <laughs> Hello? Hello, Sabrina? Now, this is Archie. Sorry, but I can't bring the canoe tonight. My car is stalled. Oh, no. Um, did you try kicking the tire? Kick the tire? Oh, come on. Just try it. It worked for me once. Well, okay. Now, oh, this is silly. Nothing happened, Sabrina. Huh? Wow, I gotta remember that. Thanks a lot, Sabrina. I'll be right over. Oh, <laughs> God, Bloom. I'm just about ready to fly off the handle. Oh, please, Miss Della, do your trick. I'm sure there'll be no more distractions. Very well. 
but one more interruption, and I'll conjure up Igor. <laughs> Magic spirit, hear my plea from out the sky. Appear to me! That tells it! Igor, appear! <laughs> I'm still laughing over the way Big Moose looked when he fell. <laughs> By the way, where is Moose? <laughs> you can't turn that terrible Igor loose on those poor kids. Oh, no. He'll teach them not to spoil my magic. <laughs> what? Oh, I better get back to the party. kids the zapping of their lives. <laughs> it was her micro witch whammy and it backfired. Good night, kids. Thanks for coming. Bye. 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 Gee, that was a swell party. <sighs> no need for this anymore. I wonder how the grown-ups are doing. Huh? going on? Watch where you're stepping. Huh? Miss Della, what happened? I'll tell you what's going to happen to you and those kids. As soon as I get back to normal size, I'm going to zap you like you were never zapped. Before I'm done with you, you'll wish you were never... Sabrina, so nice of you to volunteer. Ta-ta. Hello, Sabrina. Hello, Hexter. Oh, dear. But, Miss Della, I have to go to school. Wait, please. I'll go 
to school with you, Sabrina. Oh, no, you won't, Hexter. That would be a disaster. You'd be playing magic tricks left and right. Why, what makes you think that, Sabrina? <laughs> I'm such a doll. <laughs> a doll? Say, now, there's a wonderful idea. I'll take Hexter to school as a doll. Not so fast, Sabrina. <laughs> Turn about is fair for all. Not I, but you shall become a doll. <laughs> Hexter, you turn me back to normal at once. Turn yourself back, Sabrina. I'm headed for school. <laughs> Hexter, come back. You know I can't. As a doll, my magic is limited. Oh, dear. And being the size of a doll, I'll never catch up with Hexter. Riverdale High is doomed. Ophelia! Thank goodness. You, Ophelia! Huh? Who said that? Huh? I did, down here. Oh, oops, I forgot. Um, I am a Sabrina doll. Pull my ring and hear me talk. Gee, a Sabrina doll. Isn't she cute? Sabrina dropped me on her way to school. Would you take me to her? I sure will. Try not to wrinkle my dress, will you, Alfie? Oh, I won't. Amazing. This was mighty nice of you, Ophelia. Thank you very much. Amazing. Hexter. He's going into Miss Grundy's history class. Oh, wait, what's going on? There you are. You'll be safe in there. It's Sabrina's locker. Such a remarkable doll. Locked in my own locker? This is just groovy. If only I could see what was going on in Miss Grundy's history class. Attention, class. Attention. <clears throat> well, what have we here? Well, you're a little young for this class, aren't you, Sonny? I don't think so, ma'am. <laughs> well, we'll see. Tell me, when did George Washington cross the Delaware? Oh, most any time now. Stroke, 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 stroke. Huh? Stroke, stroke, stroke. Hey, look! Stroke, 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 stroke. It's, it's George! George. I beg your pardon, madam, but could you direct me to the Delaware? Well, it's not in here. Thank you, madam. Stroke, stroke. Stroke, stroke, stroke. Stroke, 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 stroke. George Washington, Hexter is at it. The British are coming. The British are coming. If that's who I think. Yep, that's him. Paul Revere. The British are coming. The British are coming. Oh, Mr. Revere, Mr. Franklin wants to see you. <laughs> you, you can call me Ben, Trudella. The British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming. The British are coming. I didn't hear that. I did not hear that. Oh, dear. Hey, don't tell me. You must be Betsy Ross. Well, bless your heart. Wanna buy a flag? I've just got to get back to normal size. There must be a remedy to Hexter's spell. Oh, Miss Experience, before my eyes, show me a cure to return to my normal size. Hob and hobbles, hobbles and hob. A hair from the tail of a mean alley cat should easily do the job. Good. Now to get out of here and find a mean alley cat. Made it. Yes, what is it? Uh, Mr. Weatherby, have you seen a Mr. Sitting Bull? Sitting Bull? Why, no, who wants him? The Seventh Cavalry! I didn't hear that. I did not hear that. I hope I can find a mean alley cat before Hexter gives us away as being witches. <laughs> The Seventh Cavalry, Sitting Bull. Oh, what is the meaning of all this? Ah, my good fellow, uh, would you be so kind as to take this kite there to the end of the hall, you know? Oh, uh, certainly, Mr. Franklin. Anything in the name of science. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Franklin, aren't you supposed to fly your kite in a storm? Details, details. It's a dream. It has got to be a dream. Hey, gang, Mr. Edison has just about got his light bulb working. Impossible. Mr. Franklin and I haven't discovered electricity yet. <gasps> what am I saying? Whoa! <laughs> 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 
we have now. <laughs> oh, thank goodness I found you. I'll make this as quick as possible, and I assure you, it'll hurt me more than it does you. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate your cooperation. Bye-bye, kitty. Stroke, 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 stroke. Now, to get my hands on Hexter. Stroke, stroke, stroke. Miss Grandy, what do you know about these strange goings on? It all began when I asked that new little boy what he knew about history. I'll tell you what's going on. It's witchcraft. That little kid is a... Look, he's with Sabrina, and I happen to think she is a... Anybody want to see the guy sign the Declaration of Independence? Yay! Boy, Hexter, you've sure done it now. Look at Reggie. It doesn't take much to start him on a witch hunt. Oh, I'm sorry, Sabrina. Well, there's no time to cry over spilled milk now. I'd better set things in order. First of all, I need a motion picture truck parked conveniently out in front. And now, if you'll kindly... I know, Sabrina. If I'll kindly round up my troops. <laughs> Hickory dickory duck. Everybody out to the truck. Hey, where did everybody go? Look, there's a truck out front. Acme Movie Company. Oh, so that's it. Those people were actors. Come on, Hexter. We'd best sneak away before Mr. Weatherby blows his top. So long, George, Ben, Paul. Uh, we'll have to get together again sometime. Oh, no, you don't. You two aren't going anywhere. Here they are, Mr. Weatherby. Here's the ones responsible for everything. I don't know what you've been talking about before, Reggie, but Sabrina, if you and this young man had anything to do with that visual educational idea, it was super colossal. <laughs> and as for you, Reginald, uh, Reginald? Hmm. He sort of disappeared. Well, never mind. Anytime you want to visit Riverdale High, son, just be my guest. <laughs> All right, Hexter. I'll forgive you this time since things turned out all right. Oh, thank you, Sabrina. Oh, uh, here's a little gift to sort of help me make up to you. <laughs> oh, no. I am a Reggie doll. Pull my string and I say stupid things. Ha, ha, ho, ho, ho. Back he goes. Hold on. <laughs> Another interesting story that's in the news. In the news, Uncle Sam wants to count you in. In just two weeks, your family will receive a 1980 census form in the mail. It's important to stand up and be counted to fill out that form. We'll be back with the reasons in the news. Sponsored by the makers of Crayola products. Crayola crayons. It's fun to create with Crayola. You can make a purple lake with fish both thin and fat. Or a happy birthday cake and goofy party hat. Crayola crayons. You can make a ghost to take to funny puppet shows. You can make a spotted snake that grows and grows and grows. Cause it's fun to create with Crayola. Crayola crayons come in this box of 64 different colors with a built-in sharpener. 
about the 1980 census in the news. A census is a counting of people, but the idea of the 1980 census isn't just to find out how many men, women, and children live in the United States, but also where they live and how rich or poor they are. The federal government gives about $50 billion a year to cities and towns. How much each gets depends on the number of people who live there. A poor community with a large population gets more federal money than a smaller, wealthier town. So it's important to get an accurate count. But in the last census, in 1970, the Census Bureau figures it missed counting more than 5 million people. Most of the people missed were poor or members of minority groups, the people who should benefit the most from federal money. The problem is that some people are afraid of the census. For instance, people who are not legal residents of the United States. Most sneaked into the country looking for work, and they're afraid if they fill out a census form, they'll get caught and be sent back to their own country. But the government promises that all census forms will be absolutely secret. It says no one should be afraid to fill them out. So look for your family's census form around March 28th and make sure it gets filled out. I'm Christopher Glenn with the 1980 census in the news. You know, I was always a sucker for this stuff. When they put these in comics, they put the, the big ads for the Saturday morning cartoons coming up. Like we just talked about the, the CBS. This is the NBC one. NBC took a two-pager. We're uh, CBS one page. And the thing is, is uh, ABC, uh, nowhere to be found in this issue. But, uh, look at that. Got kid video, Mr. T, the Snarks, Pink Panthers and Sun, Going Bananas, Spider-Man's Amazing Friends, Smurfs, Alvin and the Chipmunks, and One to Grow One. So, hope you guys are still liking Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, I know I do. It's, it's funny it's hokey um can't help it soft spot so we're going to go the far other direction we're going robocop alpha commando um we're going from g-rated uh archie comic to cartoon series based on a hard r movie so um I just love the fact that they poke fun at this. This is uh, RoboCop Alpha Commando Episode 9, and it's the Herminator. Uh, you know. I wish we would have got more in a comic and a video game out of uh, RoboCop versus Terminator, but that's all we got. We got toys, but, you know, whatever. So here you guys go. RoboCop Alpha Commando Episode 9, Herminator. Enjoy. Nightmare, you scufflaws have three seconds to vacate your vehicle. What you say we mow this turkey down? Go, bro! Pedal to the metal! Hey, how did he do that? Minor 
straight to dispatch. We've reached the Mega Mall. It appears the getaway car has gotten away from its drivers. I'll have a chat with it. I'm sure it'll be reasonable. Lane rockets. Mm, better have this angle right. Bravo ramp. Looks like someone beat us to the punch. Who's responsible for apprehending these fellers? Some skinny dude, funny voice. Called himself the Herminator. But the guy's a freakazoid, a walking nut job. Huh? Uh, yeah. We don't know why he attacked us. That's coming from the parking garage. This guy is a wacko. He nabs two criminals and decides to trash some cars on the way out. Uh, Agent Miner, isn't that your car? The word just came down, guys. They want the Herminator off the street. Division Alpha feels that in the wrong hands, his technology could pose a national security hazard. They have a point. At first, I thought we were just looking at body armor, but a closer look at the mall security tape seems to indicate a new form of biotechnics. The circuitry is actually part of him, whoever he is. Those cars he demolished at the mall, I ran the place. They all had overdue parking tickets. Yours, too? I... I've been busy. In the final stretch of the obstacle run, it's Robocop in the lead, with Maxi Miner gaining on him. Fantastic! Not even a 500-pound handicap could stop the Cup of Steel! Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. With just two events to go, our four finalists have got their work cut out. Uh-oh. What's this? Oh, looks like Robocop tried a kneecap on that last jump. The ref's calling for a brief time. While there's a break in the action, check out our playback screen for highlights of previous events. To even out the marksmanship contest, we made it difficult for Robocop to see his targets. But he didn't let a little thing like that affect his aim. Way to go, Robo! Hey, <laughs> that's my man, yeah! This entertainment? This is a close competition, pal. Off limits to crazies, kooks, and civilians. Who are you calling a civilian? Let the crowd decide. What do you say, people? You want to see what the Herminator can do? One more try on, and your knee will be as good as. <laughs> hey! I'm not finished! Target shooting, running, and jumping. Monkeys can be trained to do that. You people should expect more from your police officers. You want to see target practice? I'll show you target practice. <laughs> The demonstration is over, Herminator. You are under arrest. What's the charge, Robo Croc? Making you look bad? Blowing up cars is a felony. They should have paid their parking tickets!
can't be that good. Show more respect for Metro West's finest. Hold it, Herminator! You've assaulted a police officer! Stop or we shoot! Uh... I'll forgive. This time, you don't really know me yet. But next time, you better show the proper respect. Don't say a word, just get me to a sonic shower. A 250? That means if Murphy's a 10 on the kick butt scale, Terminator's a 25? How is that possible? Nanotechnology. Micro-robots and circuitry so small and sensitive they actually interface with the human body on a cellular level. Look! A nanoscientist named Zachary Wonk had work like this banned by the scientific community years ago, just before his death but his experiments were far too risky to try on human subjects. What if Wonk had a volunteer? Someone who was so crazy or angry that risks didn't matter. Don't tell me you actually have a theory. Parking tickets. I can't shake the feeling they're the root of all this, so I stopped by parking violations. Agent Miner, I think you're overreacting to your unpaid ticket. Parking enforcement records for the past five years, smart guy. Cross-check with Neumeier's nano-doctor. Overreacting, huh? Herman Wonk, badge 319, fired six months ago for attitude problems when he gave out tickets. He liked it too much. Zachary's son? You got it. How could a man subject his own kid to the risks of nanotechnology? Let's ask him. Uh, Murphy. Sorry. No mistake. This is the last address registered to Zachary Wonk. You sure we got the right house? Why don't you double park and see if anyone around here gets really mad? Ha <laughs> ha. Give it a rest. Oh, I guess we're back to square one. Voltage scanner. Maybe not. I'm detecting an unusual power source directly beneath us. Nice lab for a condemned building. This must be Herman's shrine to his late father. Or to himself. An unattended vehicle. Three inches in the red zone. That's three inches too many. Much for a parking violation, one should think, huh? Oh well, no telling with Americans. Hey, what happened to our car? Now I told you to check the radiator! Stop right there! You're under arrest for poor parking and attempted run. Must have known the robbery was in progress all along. Jolly good. Not bad, man. But he ain't no Robocop. It'll take a few months before I'm operational, but... Hey, <laughs> that tickles. 
I could tell you what's supposed to happen once the nanogenetic material fuses with the cells in my body, but then I'd have to kill you. Just kidding! <laughs> He's not all there, Murphy. Goodbye, parking enforcement. Hello, destiny. Herman Walsh, Green Detroit City Cop. If he likes cops so much, why is he such a pain? 917 in progress at 5th and Georgia. It's a big one, folks. All emergency vehicles proceed at once. Looks like Mr. Super Cop will have to wait. What's happening? <coughs> Robocop. Thank goodness you're here. No matter what we throw at this thing, the flames just won't quit. <laughs> Blast of chemicals. Sound receiver. I'm <laughs> going in. Try. Problems, Robocop? When lives are at stake, you really should call me for help. I'm the ultimate policeman, the future of law enforcement. But you, you're yesterday's news. Outdated, outmoded, and outclassed. So, do us all a favor, and shut yourself down. Look out, world! The Herminator's in town! Ha <laughs> ha! The Malt Punks confessed. from the skinny dude. Weird voice. He wouldn't show his face, you know? Guess who? And this great cop Herminator was seen at the chemical factory just before the fire. He's been going around staging his own crimes just so he can show off for the public. We've got him, Murphy. We still must apprehend him. I haven't been much good at that. Don't worry, I don't think he's gonna be at this much longer. Herman's nano components have begun evolving. They could take on a life of their own, and who knows what they'll do. And this is why his father's work was banned. Murphy? We just got a call from an anonymous terrorist. There's a runaway automated train heading toward the downtown station. The Zoom train's computer is offline, and the voice claims there's a plasma bomb on board set to go off when it hits the station. Any attempt to remove the bomb en route will cause detonation, destroying one of the population centers along the way. Guess he was just seen chasing down the train. Mr. Future of Law Enforcement, plain hero again? Help the police the best you can. I want to try something. Alone. 
jetpack. My nano circuits aren't supposed to break off and fight me. What's wrong? Something even your father didn't foresee, Herman. What are you doing here? Your nanotechnology has been evolving on its own. It has achieved a basic intelligence. It sees the bomb you made as more of its own circuitry. It can't let you shut it down. It's a trick. You just want me out of the way so you can save the train station and hog all the glory. I won't let you! <laughs> Heads up, Robocop! You're about to be a real smash! What do you have to do to get someone to let you help him? Rackley Hook! Was about to save the city but what if I, I can't I won't be top cop I'll be a murderer oh no thanks to me thousands of people are doomed maybe not Herman I can't save the city alone and neither can you but if you help me we've got a chance what do you say officer Wonk oh, officer Wonk no, I, I don't know. I think you do. Um, I'm listening. There's got to be a way to stop the detonation. And then again, be there for me, Herman. Another victory for the Terminator. Cops getting letters from prison, who'd believe it? Newmeyer says prison doctors have detected no new nano circuits after the operation. Ready? A uh, little something came for you while you were gone. What's this? Mmm, looks kind of like a parking ticket. What? Don't blame me if you don't check where you park. Murphy! Wait a minute. This ticket is signed by Officer Got You Minor. Oh, funny, partner. Real funny. <laughs>
Psst, over here. I'm a boglin. Me and my buddies need a place to hide out. <laughs> Come a little closer. Oh, did I scare you? Oh, I do that so well. If you take us home, we'll kiss your Aunt Martha. <laughs> we'll eat your peas. And we hope you know lots of girls. The name's Boglitz. You sold separately, and we're looking for good homes. Maybe yours. <laughs> Feel their power. Watch them soar. Bone Age, where cavemen fight in dinosaurs, where Taro and Anklor battle to survive. Taro, convert to land attack. Anklor, convert for chase. Each sold separately. You can build fighters never seen before from the bones of these mighty dinosaurs. Bone Age. Convert to survive! Fire! Taro and Angkor sold separately with a caveman. Bone Age! Hey, hope you're still liking Robocop. Um, I gotta ask you guys, uh, um, again, still wanna know what's your favorite comic book and what's your favorite comic book to, to, to cartoon. Um, do you guys like when I do the, 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 the themes? You know? Is, is that fun? Do you, or do you want me to just keep mixing it up? Or just do a theme one every once in a while? Let me know. Comment. Let, 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 let the captain know. Because I, I don't know what to bring you guys if you don't ask. And yes, I know a lot of you guys have been asking for certain cartoons. I wish I could air them. I wish I could air, you know, Thundercats, G.I. Joe. I wish I could air Silverhawks. I wish I could air Thundar. Believe me, I wish I could under, do Thundar. Uh, Galtar. I can't do that. Um, there's just a lot of stuff. Some of the King's features I can't do. So no uh, Flash Gordon. No Defenders of the Earth. Um... So, there's a lot I can't air, but there's a lot I can air. And I will continue to air what I can air. So, here we go. We're going still in the same direction as Robocop. We're bringing you some Conan. I just had a conversation with a guy about some Conan the other, at the shop the other day. Uh, I am a sucker for Conan, and it's nice talking to people who are also suckers for Conan. Um, you know, because we had the discussion, who is the better Conan, whether it be... Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or Jason Momoa, um, I was like, me, I, I think Jason Momoa looks more like what I thought Conan looked like in the books, um, but, you know, more people know Conan as the Arnold Schwarzenegger, big bull type, when he was in the comics, he's built like a panther, not in the comics, but in the books, he's built like a panther, so, I think Jason Momoa looks more like what I expect Conan to look like, so, this is... Conan the Adventurer. This is episode seven, and this is the terrible Torrenson. Tornin, Tornin, Tornin. Yeah, Tornin, Tornon. Yep, I know how to pronounce words. So here you guys go. Enjoy. Finally, a village. <laughs> and where there's a village, there's a tavern. Let's go. Wait, what's the meaning of that? Thieves and criminals, beware. You are entering the cursed village of Uruk. Seems peaceful enough. I don't know. There's something odd about this place. Look up ahead. That looks like trouble. Oh, strangers! You should not be here! This village is home to the mighty wizard, Terrible Toranon! Yes! Leave while you still can! If the Terrible Toranon finds you here... Ah! Ah! A monster! Help me! Help me! These people make no move to save her. Are they all cowards? Ah! Oh, help me! Please! They won't do anything by crumb. I will. Ah! Who dares disturb the terrible Toranon? Back to your petted lair, monster. So perish all enemies of the terrible Toranon. Mighty wizard. Do not thank me yet, fair maiden. <laughs> I need a slave, and you will do nicely. No! Ah! They're gone. 
That terrible Toronon really is a powerful wizard, isn't he? I'll say. Rathamon's got nothing on Toronon. Wizards. Bless the lot of them. Uh, I've never seen a wizard put down such a large monster, but with one gesture. Something very odd is going on around here. Wizard or not, we're going to save that girl. Quest to undo the spell of living stone cast upon his family by driving the evil serpent men back into another dimension and vanquishing their leader, the cruel wizard Rathamon. Taken the girl inside. Seems a fitting lair for a man of magic. Wait here. I'll scout her out first. See if Jesmond and Snag are all right. Oh, Needle hopes Star Girl not hurt. Star Girl, Red Beard, that looks bad. Oh, oh, oh. Are you all right, girl? I think so. Rush Masters, you have violated my sanctum. Now you will suffer my wrath. Oh, oh, Star Girl, where are you? Star Girl, oh, oh. Ah, no Star. No red beard, only fire! Ah! This wizard has harmed them, Hal. Ah, Conan, look out! Bird woman! Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. Shining through red glass. Ah! He's set! He's set! <laughs> Taste star metal, you oversized lizard! Ah! <laughs> it's a metal statue. <laughs> Needle know it's not real set. Oh, my! Really? <laughs> Intruders, beware! Behold how I punish those who dare to defy me! Oh, don't worry. I offer you one final warning. 
warning. Yes, what? This is your last chance. Your final warning. I hear your voices. Do not trifle with my terrible power. Act now. Trample before me. Fall to your knees, you puny humans. Show yourself, wizard. I offer you one final chance for freedom. You will be spared if you vow to tell everyone that I am the mightiest spellcaster the world has ever seen. The Terrible Irk! The Terrible Irk? Conan! He got you too? <laughs> oh no, I got him. My friends, the Terrible Toranon. <laughs> Hello. Would uh, any of you care to join me for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're a better cook than you are a wizard. <laughs> my guests, I'd like to introduce you to my lovely daughter, Tarana. Good evening. Welcome to our table. <sighs> you're looking much healthier than the last time I saw you. Why, thank you, kind sir. You're no magician. Why all the deception? Well, I, I'm descended from a long line of powerful wizards, but I don't know the first thing about real magic. I, I was never interested in it. <laughs> Too difficult. My first love was the theater, but I was such a bad actor that my critics suggested I move on. So, I joined a traveling circus and became their resident charlatan. It's with the knowledge I gained here that I created the character of Terrible Toranon and the illusions you witness today. But why create such an evil character? Our little village is right on the border of Stygia. Cultivating the reputation of a great and powerful wizard keeps Rathamon and other troublemakers away. And the entire town is in on it. They warn us when strangers arrive, then we do our act. You put on an impressive show. <laughs> I must confess, there is one real magic trick that I do know. I learned from an old magic book that's been in my family for years. Uh, watch this. To true magic, I really am terrible. <laughs> terrible Torridon! I know that voice, it's Wind Fang. a challenge, we'll give him one. Ah, make more like set! More scary! More, more scary! Ah. Conan, when I give you the signal, take that tunnel to the secret hatch. It leads outside. You know what to do then. Hmm, what's this lever do? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I asked. That's it. That's it. Oh, that's good. Right there. Yeah, right, right up here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, hold it for me. Okay. 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 Put, put two more at the edge there. We'll see how Rathamon likes my fireballs, too. Don't worry, you'll do fine. But I'm a fake, a fraud. Rathamon's magic is real. Remember, we'll be right there with you. Here are your fireworks. Maybe he won't come. Get in there, terrified Toranon! 
out his true nature. Oh, 
one mage can, can be this powerful. Give him the ring! Give it to him! Relinquish the Black Ring! As... as you command, Master. <laughs> Master, I must get my hands on that ring! I'm trying! It's all over! We're defeated! We're... No! Set has hooves! Master, it, it, it's a trick! Set is a, a horse! A horse? A horse? I will not be made the fool! I know, uh, but it's much easier with a little bottle of mead. <laughs> One last word. Wherever you go, remember to tell everyone how I defeated Rathamon. You're not a little concerned that Rathamon will return one day? <laughs> My dear friends, being a descendant of a long line of wizards does have its advantages. I've inherited an entire library of magic spell books to study. And you've shown me that I'm stronger than I ever believed. So, if Rathamon dares come here again, I'll show him some real magic. <laughs> now, farewell, my friends. Farewell, terrible Toranon, wherever you're hiding. Good luck and good magic. Real magic? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Conan, the adventurer. Conan, warrior without fear. He's more powerful than... His quest to undo the spell of living stone cast upon his family by driving the evil serpent men back into another dimension and vanquishing their leader, the cruel wizard Rathamon. Conan, the adventurer. Doom.
around until he came. The toughest lawman in the Western galaxy. Marshal Bravestar, the only man who could stop Ted Sands, the evilest space outlaw ever. The biggest laser battle in space is about to begin. Get ready. Marshal Bravestar, Tex Hex, the neutral laser, and you. Blow open the town and blast off the outlaws with weapons that shoot invisible electronic beams. Awesome! Bravestar, coming soon from Mattel. Batteries not included. Toys sold separately. T.O. Power Takeoff. Body of steel. Soft rubber wheels. Two speeds forward, two speeds back. Power to shift. Each sold separately from Buddy F. You know, hope you guys are enjoying the Conan. So, these are bad. These are awesome. Uh, these are new lunch boxes, actual metal lunch boxes with actual thermoses in them. That's right. And they're not ret they're retro, but they're not old. They're affordable. Uh, I got Ghost Rider. I got the X-Men, uh, I have some uh, um, Godzilla on the way, uh, I am a sucker for lunch boxes. I have a bunch of original lunch boxes and I have some repro lunch boxes. Uh, I have a uh, Master Universe and, and uh, Thundercats up there, I also got it right next to original uh, Gargoyles. I have some over there and over there and behind stuff. So I put up a sucker for lunch boxes. All right, that you guys still liking Conan? I hope. So we're gonna keep it going, and we're going to the superhero route, and we're doing some Ultra Force. Um, a lot of people, like I said before, people are like, oh, they're just not. They're blatant knockoffs. Um, I love. George Perez talking about, he goes, well, I don't know why I'm working over here working on uh, uh, Iron Man knockoff when I could actually be working for Marvel and doing Iron Man. So he went back to Marvel and worked drawing Iron Man for and the, the Avengers for a while. Um, Ultra Force uh, is folded into the uh, Marvel. Uh, every once in a while, the character will pop up somewhere. Uh, Topaz was a member of the Avengers for a while. Um, they just kind of let the other characters go, which is unfortunate. Uh, I'd really like to see some of these characters come back, um, which is about, about the time for them to come back. Uh, I think they got two years, because if not, they got to do the copyright thing again. So That's why they did Secret Wars relatively recently, the one, because they brought back characters that they haven't used in forever. Uh, it was like a few years before that, they did the New Universe stuff. That's why they folded some of the New Universe stuff into the standard Marvel Universe, like Starbrand and the Night Mask. We need more Ultra Force stuff folded into the MCU. Just saying. Or MC, the, the 616. So, here you guys go. Ultra Force. This is Veiled through. Fly. I'm sweet tooth, and I'm up, up, and away. Twice as fancy, my little pony. You all look so pretty to me. They're all so pretty, I could never pick a favorite. Twice as fancy, my little pony. The most beautiful up, up, and away. Twice as fancy, my They're little pony. They're sweet tooth. I love, 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 looking at you. Twice as fancy, my little pony. Each sold separately from Hasbro. Hi, I'm Betty White, and I'll be right back with One to Grow Up. Luke, just because Mom and Dad are gone for a few hours doesn't mean you have to hog the bathroom. I'm not. I can't get the door open. It's stuck. Oh, great. Hurry up. The toilet's overflowing. I accidentally flushed a brush down there. Oh, gross. Ah, oh, get me out of here. There's water everywhere. Who do I call? What do I do? Don't panic. If you know you're going to be alone in the house, make sure you have a phone number of a neighbor or a relative handy to call in case of an emergency. Ask your parents where they'll be and keep numbers for the police and fire departments by the phone. Knowing who to reach in a hurry will take away the need to worry. Mom, Bobby's mom! 
Miss Swinnerton, boy, am I glad I found your number. See you in a couple minutes. Hang on, Luke. Help is on the way. And that's Wonder Grower. Uh, you know, I hope you guys are still liking Ultra Force. Uh, man, I love going through some of these old uh, Silver Age books, but unfortunately, sometimes by the time I get them, uh, they've gone through probably 10 owners or more. And sometimes some little kid got at it with an ink pen, like colored in Thor's hair, uh, colored that in. Uh, I bought this in bulk, so I got really nothing in it, but yeah. it's just depressing. So we're going to keep it going, and uh, we're going to do Mask, Mobile, Armored, Strike Command, because remember, Command starts with a K. Uh, this was both a DC comic and an IDW comic. It was folded into the Hasbro, because now Hasbro has the rights to mask. Uh, it was folded into the uh, that whole continuity with the Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, Mask, Micronauts, ROM, all that was folded in together. But, like I said, DC had one, and they did the mini comics that came with the toys, so don't forget those. So technically, you know, He-Man started out in comics first, then the cartoon. So, too. So this is Mask. This is episode 13, The Creeping Terror. Enjoy. Scaredy cat. I'm impressed. The new hospital is very well equipped. I'm happy you're pleased, Mr. Tracker. It never could have been built if it weren't for your generous contributions. Friendly chap, wouldn't you say? You two seem to be getting along quite well. I should hope so. Back in the States, I own an exotic pet store. Hey, stop that. My head is not a trash can. <laughs> Great danger! Great danger! 
great danger. Paolo, what is it? We, we sail down river. We see them. They attack. Chase us. Destroy boat. Who attacked you? I would not believe if my eyes did not see. Giant caterpillars. Giant caterpillars? This I'd like to see. Me too. No, Scott. You stay here with T-Bob. Let's go, Alex. I don't see anything wrong. Maybe Kala and his men were exaggerating. If these little blighters really exist, I'd like to take one back with me. What in the world? There's not a scrap of vegetation left. Look over there. Are they what I think they are? By Jove, those are the biggest eggs I've ever seen. But how did they get so big? A computer analysis of some of that caterpillar eggshell should give us an answer. Scan indicates member of Lepidoptera insect family in larval stage. Examination reveals eggs have been genetically altered. Genetically altered caterpillar eggs? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Great Scott! Looks like you need a bigger cage. Look at them eat. At the rate they're going, the jungle will be stripped bare in a matter of days. Of course, those bounders are vegetarians. The caterpillars that attacked the villager's boat weren't after them. They were after the food they were carrying. Very interesting. Anything wrong, Alex? Well, not exactly wrong, but extremely curious. Look over there. It looks like some kind of war. It goes all over the place. Come on, let's check it out. I'd like to know who's firing at us. Rats. I don't know who you are, but don't come back. I think they'll poke their noses around here for a long while. Well, one thing's settled. Venom's involved. And that means it's time to call in mask. Priority one emergency. Select the best mask agents for this mission. Selection complete. Recommended personnel. Ondo McLean, weapons specialist and field strategist. Vehicle code name, Firecracker. Brad Turner, expert motorcycle and helicopter pilot. Vehicle code name, Condor. Personnel approved. Assemble Mobile Armored Strike Command. Just this morning, this part of the jungle was impenetrable. What do you make of this wall, Honda? I'm not sure, but from the condition of it, it has to be thousands of years old. But what could Venom have to do with this? Do, do we need all these coconuts? We might get hungry, T-Bob. <laughs> we? All I need is an oil change. We've got to get them away from there before they discover the map. It's Venom, quick! To your vehicle! It's gone.
the weather, Hondo. Quite interesting. a dose of my hypno headlight. Vanessa's up there and not down here. Better check it out. Vanessa, you've got company. Just one more shot. Cover me. Finish it up. I'll handle him. Mayhem sure doesn't want me to get near her. What are they up to? I got everything we need. 8x10 and wallet size. Venom, mission accomplished. Then let's get out of here. It looks like there's no need to hurry. <laughs> We're trapped. We can't hold on much longer. I'm going to see if I can find out what Vanessa was doing up there. So that was it. Now I see what Mayhem was after. Somehow he knew about this and was using the caterpillars to clear away the jungle. It all makes sense now. Computer, decipher and analyze map, please. Pictograph map was constructed by the ancient Malacca civilization several thousand years ago. Wow! We're standing on a giant map! In some ways, the Malaccas were further advanced scientifically than we are. Pictograph apparently points the direction to the location of an undetermined source of great power. That's what Venom wanted. Computer, 
Interface object of map. Give us coordinates of the location of this power source. I don't know what kind of power it has, but we'd better get there before Venom. According to the map, this is the waterfall we've been looking for. The hidden valley is behind it. Dagger, drive through, check it out. It's all clear. There's plenty of room to fly through. Let's go. This is it, the Hidden Valley. What we want is in that cave. What's that? I stole this from an antique dealer in the Orient who didn't know what it was. What's written on it? Its inscription told me the map was carved on the jungle floor. Once that ancient power source is in our hands, nothing can stop us. <coughs> it's that room. The power source is in there. Crystal. Ooh, sure beats the rings I've seen. According to the inscription, once I insert this into the crystal, it should activate the power source. According to the computer, our destination is behind the waterfall. Let's go. Mm, I don't think I like this. Yeah, me neither. Sounds to me like we just armed a bomb. I'll fix that. Ah! It's jammed, and it's extremely hot. I'm getting out of here. All right, let's go and check things out. Alex, that high pitch sound. Scan the area. Something's wrong. Bam, here comes Beth. This may work out better than I thought. Scanner indicates a powerful mass is overloading. Matt, according to the computer, there is a mass with an overload of power in this cave. There is a chance of an explosion, and we don't have much time. Quick, to the cave. Destroy that crystal! Spectrum, on. It's no use. It's just using up my energy. What's going on? It's Venom's doing. We're trapped! <laughs> That's the end of them. Let's go! gonna blow up! What are you gonna do, Dad? Matt, I'll use my blaster. Blaster, on. Hondo, it's no use. If Spectrum doesn't work, that means all of the other weapons are useless. There's still Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus? On! Oh. Atta boy, come.
Come and get it. They're going into the cocoon state. Now they'll change into butterflies? Not exactly, Brad. You see, because of their size, their metabolism is different. They'll probably sleep for centuries. Yeah! And after all this, so could I! <laughs> <laughs> You sure this is safe? Yeah, I've done it lots of times. Whee! Uh, this is fun. T-Bob, you get off him. Of I can't see where I'm... Don't you two ever do that again. A bike is made for one passenger only. You could have gotten hurt. I sure feel like a booming idiot. <laughs> sold separately from Captain Power and the soldier. Collection of Centurions from Kenner. You know, it, it's being a fan of Mask is is funny because Mask is is almost one of the um, illegitimate kids of uh, you know the He Man, the GI Joe, Transformers, Thundercats. Um, you had all that, and then you had Mask over here. That was really good, but didn't feel like it fit in. 
Um, I do love the fact that they've kind of folded Mask into being connected with G.I. Joe and IDW and in, in Hasbro Toys. Um, I really thought that that's where they were going to go with um, the G.I. Joe and Transformer movies. Um, I thought they were going to somehow introduce Mask in there. So, so far we haven't, but it's it could still happen. So, that being said, we're going to keep it going. We're going back to superheroes. We're going to Wildcats. Uh, Wildcats is getting their 30th anniversary. Um, that's crazy to me that they're th that Wildcats is 30 years old. Uh, DC Comics now has the rights to, to uh, Wildcats, not Image. Um, but they were never owned by Image. They were always owned by Jim Lee, who is now works for uh, DC, and he's one of the head-ups there. So he folded Wildstorm into DC and the Wildcats are connected to Batman because of Grifter now um, which I think is funny because I, I don't feel like the Wildcats and Batman mesh well but Grifter kind of works with like Red Hood I, I just find it a weird mesh I, I just find it a weird uh, weird connecting to make Batman and the Wildcats connected. So, but that being said, we're going to keep it going. This is Wildcats episode 7, Soul of a Giant. Enjoy. city of Mildena. The Wildcats have been dispatched to investigate. Their instructions are to remain inconspicuous, completely subtle. And if there's one thing the Wildcats are noted for, hold it right there! It's their subtlety. Ah, he is indeed a Daemonite drone. Observe the marker. Love the way you check for these little details after you knock them cold. A gun is a gun. The true warrior does not hesitate. Doors locked. Won't be long. Easy, hotshot. Let's try the delicate touch first. Once a hacker, always a hacker. Not bad. Could have used you on a job or two a couple years back. Get those drills loaded! It's Pike. It would appear the Daemonites are stealing digging equipment. They must be working underground. No wonder Void couldn't pinpoint their position. Do we take him? No. This is but a minor theft. We must follow them to their main base of operation. And then we shred them. Correct. Activating cloaking mode. Now. How long will Zealot and the others be gone? They're due to check in in four hours. Better grab some shut eye. Maul. Yeah? You've got first watch. Keep an eye peeled. Void's readings were hazy. The Daemonites could be anywhere. I'll be watching. Good. I understand you have some memories of this place. No. Nah. Nothing important. All right. You'll be relieved by Voodoo at 0400. 
Nothing important at all. Dad! Dad! I found something! Look! What is it? Jeremy! Look out! Dad! Jeremy! Oh! The pit! It's collapsing! Hazim! Quickly! Pull him up! Pull him up! Hurry! Jeremy, are you all right? Just a scratch. Dad, you saved me. But the, the dig. Ah, son, you're all that matters. You're my pride, my joy, my hopes and dreams. What? No. What's happening to me? Sleep on guard duty, he'd tear your head off. Oh, he can have it. Maul, you having nightmares again? Nah, it's nothing, really. Maul, look at me. It's the V babe, remember? You can't hide anything from me. Now talk. Oh, my dad again. I guess it's the area. He used to work here. Saved my life once. Doesn't sound like such a bad dream to me. You don't understand. He was more than my dad. He was my hero. I wanted to be just like him. Then I dream he sees me. Like I am now. Oh, Maul. You never told him? How could I? The man was a god to me. I can't let him know I turned into this. Heads up, you two! Zella just signaled. They found the Daemonites, and they're on the move. Coming! Let's move, Maul. Hustle up! On my way. Join the Wildcats and see the world. <laughs> Didn't realize I was going to be seeing it so up close and personal. The way of the warrior is not an easy one. Now she tells me. Zealot's signal has stopped moving. They're inside. Do we attack? Not yet. Don't want to tip their hand. Wait for a sign. How will we know it? I get the feeling there won't be much doubt. Uh. Uh, uh. Do not dare. <clears throat> Sorry. Intruders! Eliminate them! Now. Wait! What? There! It's my father. Working for the Daemonites. Maul, 
He's clear. No. No, not my father. He can't be working for those blasted bug faces. I won't let him. Maul, your temper. Oh, no. Get up. You have to stop them. Let us get you to safety, Professor. You said I'd be safe here. A minor setback. If you'll just watch that. A slightly larger setback. No! 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 What's with Mo? He's gotten too big. He's out of control. Look out! Remember who you are. Remember. I'm. 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 Get away! What kind of hideous monster are you? I'll tell you what kind, Mister. Maul is your Spartan. No. I mean it. No. Voodoo is right, Spartan. It is not your place. What happens between them is for them alone to decide. Listen, I don't know who you costume freaks are, but I want you out of here immediately. Do you understand? This is a peaceful scientific expedition. Oh, yeah. Real peaceful. My sponsors felt the dig might be subject to attack. Obviously, their only error was to be under-equipped. Whatever you're stealing, please take it and go. I'm on the verge of an important archaeological discovery here. Wait! These sponsors, did they call themselves Daemonites? Names are of no concern to me. All that matters is my work. Now, please leave. I'm afraid not, Professor. Whatever you're looking for, we cannot allow it to fall into Daemonite hands. Like it or not, the Wildcats just became your new assistants. Maul, you have to tell him. I can't. You saw the way he looked at me. To him, I'm a monster. Besides, he's not the dad I knew. That man was a caring person. He would never let his work become his life. Now he seems so cold, so bitter. All that matters is his work. You there, the big one. Make yourself useful and clear this debris. Move it! <laughs> Careful, you lummox. That's a pre-Etruscan column. Uh, Phoenician. What? Nothing. I heard what you said. And you're right. Who taught you archaeology? The best. Oh? And just who was that? Sorry. Don't know him anymore myself. So, how's it going down there? Fine. Of course, you're a major help. Hey, if I'd wanted to work hard, I wouldn't have turned to crime. Oh, yeah? Whoa! <laughs> easy on the ceramics voodoo. <sighs> Nothing. I could have sworn. Uh, Professor, I think I found something here. What? Impossible. Let me see. You're right. The support structure here reveals there was a hidden chamber. You've got an excellent eye for archaeology, my purple-skinned friend. Almost as good as someone else I once knew. As a matter of fact, you remind me of him somehow. Something about you. What? Nothing. An old pain. You wouldn't understand. I might. You? 
What do you know of pain? Have you ever lost a son? No, but... No. Please, I apologize. My son vanished years ago. No trace. The anguish almost killed me. All that saved me was my work. Nothing else matters. There is nothing else for me to live for, right? Uh... Actually, there's something maybe you ought to know. I found it! What? I mean, we found it. The tablet. The tablet that tells the location of the ancient puzzle. That's great. Let me see. Look, right here. It says, the ancient puzzle is located... What? It's the demonites. They're attacking. Time to roar, wildcats! <laughs> even for the time you saved me in Mil Dana oh. Mil Dana but that was that was look out get up we've got to get out of here come on get up get up you're in great danger oh, Jeremy hi dad Sorry, I didn't write. Urgh. Jeremy! Keep me coming! Oh, yeah! Just make sure the check's clear! Please, Jeremy! Get up! Give it up, Professor. Just grab the tablet, you're coming with us. That's what you think. Endanger the professor. Place, professor? Naturally. I conducted a dig here about ten years ago with my son. After an accident, we abandoned the dig. We found nothing. According to this, you quit just a little too soon. As you see. What is it? A key to the greatest power in the universe. A power that will permit the Daemonites to rule this world and the entire galaxy. <gasps> what? Part of it's missing! We need to find that piece, Professor. 
Looks like you got a job to do. No good. The Daemonites must be digging again. Void can't get a fix. Maul, you saw the tablet, right? Yeah, but it was written in Sanskrit. I used to know it when I was Jeremy. You can remember, Maul. I know you can. I'm trying. It said... Yeah, I remember. I know where they are. I told you to find that missing piece! No! I will never help you! You're not going to have much choice, Professor. No! No! Hey, Bugface. Like the man said. No! Let's tear them up! Hold on, Maul. But Spartan, they're getting away. No need to chase them. We got what they were after. But I don't understand. How did it happen? What have you become? A hero. See, there were these good aliens called Caribou, and they crashed on Earth a long time ago, and, well, it's a long story. Save it. As long as you're fighting those evil creatures, that's good enough for me, my son. We've got the ancient puzzle. But there's a key piece missing. Not for long. Going up? I know exactly where it is. I dropped it in here ten years ago. Just before the cave in. Here you go, Dad. The missing piece. There! What's it say, Professor? It says that something called the Orb is hidden in the Temple of Themescria. The Temple of Themescria? It's a legend, like Atlantis. No one knows where it is. Huh. A lot of good that does us. And that the orb can only be controlled by she who can see evil within. Now wait a minute. Is this like a prophecy or something? Hmm. But to unlock the orb requires the code of threes. Thrice three, and again thrice three, creates four. Hmm. It's a riddle. Could mean anything. Hey! They attack again! They're taking the ancient puzzle! Rectorize them! <laughs> Blasted bug faces! You okay, Spartan? Just shorted my circuits a second. But now the Daemonites have the information too. Guess this means the race for the orb is really gonna heat up now. We must prevent them from obtaining it first. The freedom of the galaxy depends on it. You'll stop them, won't you, son? You got it, Dad. And after that, I'm coming home. I promise. After these messages, the fourth.
Fox is back. The Rebels won't tire till they see the last of the Empire. And Kenner's there with Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. I'm off to rescue R2-D2. Why, Wing Fighter, you have to put it together. Batteries not included. Action figures each sold separately. Activate laser cannon. Ready. On target! Luke, stop off at the base where we're coming in. Why wing fighter? Action figures sold separately from Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi collection. <laughs> It's circus fun right in your bowl And you're gonna wanna come flying For horses and hoops, falls and bears Elephants and lions Me? Horses, hoops, falls, bears Elephants and lions New circus fun cereal Crunchy red hoops, speckled balls and many marshmallow animals Circus fun, a spectacular part of this complete breakfast Yeah, well, you fixed your own breakfast <laughs> Okay, I gotta find out this one This is the one I always wondered about Always love it. You can win a trip to Gotham. Gotham. And appear in a comic book. But look at the characters. They were all Marvel characters at the time, except for Red Sonia over here, who's now no longer a uh, Marvel comic character. Um, I want to know if anybody ever won that. I, I would love to go back. That, I need to do a, a special where I go and search for all the people who won all the big contests. Like the bicycle, or the twenty-five hundred dollar uh, toy spree, or the, the being the comic, or the guy to be in was it Superman three? I want to find these and see if these people actually won these things and if they actually got what they were supposed to get. Um, I gotta find that out. But also, still, let me know favorite comic book, favorite comic book to, to cartoon or cartoon to comic book. Let me know. So. If you're, if you're new, you, Black Adam just came out with The Rock. So, and Shazam's coming soon. So, we're going to bring you Shazam the cartoon. Uh, filmation. Uh, of course, Alan Oppenheimer is going to be there. Skeletor, because he's working for Filmation. A lot, a lot of the same people. A lot of the same animation. A lot of the same people working on each episode. Alan Oppenheimer was a Filmation guy. Um, you know, like... Frank Walker was a uh, Sunbow slash ha Hanna-Barbera guy. So, this is Shazam. This is episode three, the bestseller. Enjoy. This is Billy Batson, star reporter for station WIZZ-TV. He has been picked by the aged wizard Shazam to carry on the wizard's lifelong crusade against crime and the forces of evil. When Billy speaks the wizard's name, Shazam! Billy becomes Captain Marvel, mighty champion, combining the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Hercules, the stamina of Atlas, the power of Zeus, the courage of Achilles, and the speed of Mercury. Billy's twin sister, Mary Batson, has also been granted special power. When she speaks the name... Shazam! Mary Batson becomes Mary Marvel, blending the grace of Selena with the best qualities of other goddesses, whose names combined form the word Shazam. The third member of the mighty trio is their friend, lame newsboy Freddie Freeman, when he speaks the name of his idol, Captain Marvel! Freddie becomes the powerful Captain Marvel Jr. Together, they are the mighty Marvel, dedicated to fighting the forces of evil throughout the universe. It's a quiet day at the Marvel Mansion, but not for long, for Billy and Mary's cousin, Freckles Marvel, is about to pay them a visit. And she's brought a most unusual and dangerous present with her. We're so glad to see you, Freckles. I've really missed you all. And Mary, I brought you a surprise. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. Yuck, what's that? Are there more of those things? If crocodiles had money, this would be a bestseller. 
Where did you find it? I guess you could say it found me. This old peddler stopped by the other day and asked if I wanted to buy a rare book. That old peddler was me. Ibac, the accursed Ibac. I knew she'd give that book to her cousin. Am I a genius? <laughs> yes, Ibac, you are a genius. And wait until Mary Marvel sees what happens tonight. <laughs> your magic word. Something's wrong. Shut up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now we have all three of you. A very successful operation. Emperor Ibak will be so happy. so you can say your last words. You should live so long, you little twerp. Enter the people processor with them. Just the usual stuff. Ha, ha. You call that dinosaur? 
so are usual? It is. For your one million years in the past. Just be good, loyal Hisman and make yourselves at home here. Home? Uh, uh, we'll never join you. That's what you think. Take the two little ones away and train them. This one's going with me. Just you wait, I back. <laughs> What are you doing up? My clock started going crazy. That's funny. So did mine. Mine, too. For goodness sake, they put a subway stop in our backyard. I don't like the looks of this. Where's Mary, anyhow? And Freddy. And Billy. Ready, men? My moment of triumph, Billy Batson. A time tube is ready to operate. This tube comes out one million years in the future, in your backyard. I like that touch. Ha! Trying to conquer the world again? You'll never su succeed No. Well, this time I'm going to conquer the whole human race before it becomes the human race. With my help, the Hiss men will conquer the cavemen, and we'll get all the soldiers we need from your people. You mean... That's right. We'll use the people processor to make humans into his men. Curses! The cavemen are attacking again. I must find a way to change to Captain Marvel. Double curses! <sighs> I hear something coming up the tube. Stop! I'm Billy! If you're Billy, Let's see you change to Captain Marvel. That's why I came back. Let's hope it works up here. Shazam! Now let's see how brave Ibac is. Gee, Captain Marvel, you've got to stop Ibac and those hiss men. If they conquer the cavemen, the human race won't have any ancestors. Oh, maybe we'll all just disappear, like when you turn off the TV. Don't worry, folks. I'll take care of Ibac. Holy moly. I can't go down there as Captain Marvel. If I'm going to reach the Hissman's time, I'll have to become Billy Batson. Isn't that a little risky? There's no other way. My power short out the time tunnel. Shazam! Don't worry, I'll be back soon. Looks like the coast is clear. Sure! He will be safe for the moment. We'd better go tell I back.
Can anyone stop the evil Ibac? Find out next. Billy Batson is Ibac's prisoner. Meanwhile, his friends wonder what to do. I don't care what you say. I'm going after Billy. <coughs> don't you think we better wait a little longer? <coughs> situation calls for Uncle Marvel. I guess. Shazam! Maybe we better think this over. Billy! Quick! Cease the humans! Stop that girl! Shazam! I think I have a little score to settle with these guys. Turn on that machine, Freckles. No! No! Anything but for that! Well done, Freckles. You're a real marvel. Now this time, you three stay put. Bar the doors and wait till I come back with Mary and Freddy. Sure you want me to? No, uh, oh, I, I take it back. Then you'd better tell me where Mary and Freddy are. to see you. Ibex getting away.
somehow I have a feeling we won't be seeing him again for a while. How about a visit to the people processor? You said it! Well, our world's still here. I'll bet I back and the Hiss men are still running. Now let's get rid of this time tube. Wait a minute. I hate to take my present back, but hmm, allow me. So ends another adventure with the mighty Marvel. You won't want to miss the next exciting adventure with star reporter Billy Batson, his sister Mary, their friend Freddie Freeman, lovable Uncle Dudley, and that amazing talking tiger, Mr. Tawny. Viruses are attacking the world's computers, and the computer warriors have been generated to stop them. A soccer trophy changes into an evil techno tank, forcing the computer warriors down. Hiding in a Pepsi can, the computer warriors fight back and deliver a direct hit. But the viruses keep coming, so the computer warriors convert a clock into a digital laser blaster and wipe out the virus air attack. Computer Warriors. Expect the unexpected. Each sold separately. Computer and pencil sharpener available for 1990. Only from Mattel. things about I always wanted a uh, Spider-Man cartoon based on team up I would love to love the scene thing I would love to see like a the Marvel team up Marvel two in one hour where they had the Hulk and Spider-Man um, teaming up with a with a new character every week like they do with the Batman brave and the bold uh, he uh, Spider-Man is around the same time Spider-Man's Amazing Friends came out. They kind of did that, where they would introduce uh, a character. Spider-Man Amazing Friends was kind of... And, and the Amazing Spider-Man were kind of uh, a Marvel team-up uh, cartoon. Kind of. Kind of. So, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys liked Shazam. I hope you liked the uh, whole superhero comic book episode, not superheroes, because, you know, Archie and them aren't superheroes. Uh, the whole comic book format theme this week. Um, like I said, if you guys don't like me doing the theme weeks, let me know. Uh, I thought about doing other weeks, like maybe an all Deke day, or all fun Filmation day, or um, maybe all Sunbow, something like that. Um, let me know. You know, I, um, I don't know unless you guys let me know what you like. Uh, and as always, I'm always looking for new cartoons to be able to air. Uh, I'm also always putting together a show almost every moment, every day. I take one day off usually, and that is usually Saturday night. 
every other night I'm working on something. So I'm going to say, as always, every Monday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for Group Therapy TV interviews with some of the best in uh, movies, comic books, uh, horror hosts, uh, creators, you name it, I'll interview them. Uh, Sci, -Fri Sci Fridays, every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as you're watching it right now, Saturday morning serials, every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, also, November 13th is coming up quick. It is the return of PickleCon at the Miami Valley Center Mall in Pickle, Ohio. We have the Batmobile. Uh, we're going to have a Batman and a Batgirl there for pictures. Um, it is free admission. Uh, we have vendors and dealers from all over Ohio. Uh, we have some comic book artists coming in. We have Craig Boldman. We just did Archie's. We have Archie comic book artist Craig Boldman coming in to do artwork and sell his prints and all that fun stuff. So, there's a lot going on that day. It's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sunday, November 13th. You can come in and buy Christmas stuff for all your family. Um, there'll be vendors there for pretty much everybody, uh, located at the Miami Valley Center Mall in Pickle, Ohio, right off of 75 at the 3675 interchange, so you can't miss it. All right, and I got some cool stuff on the horizon, hope we'll be able to t talk about it soon, maybe as soon as next week, I'll have it all going forward. So I'm going to let you guys all go. I will see y'all there and take care. Bye.